Hey, and welcome back to Jen and Dan's Natural Healing with Plants. I am Jen. I'm a health educator, a coach, and a master herbalist. I'm here with my friend Dan. Hey, I'm Dan, your exercise specialist and fellow master herbalist. Today, we're exploring a topic that's central to our overall well-being, gut health. We'll discuss how natural healing methods and herbs can support a healthy gut and what should be a priority for optimal digestive health. Yeah, so Jen, um, I'm not Jen. Um, Dan and I both went to the School of Natural Healing, which is Dr. Christopher, founded by Dr. Christopher. Many of you have seen his herbs. I'm Dr. Christopher. And at the School of Natural Healing, everything begins in the gut. You want to resolve something that's related to gut, it's related to constipation. And so people say, but wait, I'm not constipated. But if you think about it, like even in the heart, um, congested arteries can lead to heart disease. And so anyway, so we'll get away from that. We were talking about the gut and digestive health. It is so important. That's where we absorb our nutrients. That's where we get rid of waste. Um, when the liver is finished processing something toxic, it spits it out into our intestines or our urinary um, tract and we have to get rid of it, right? And so we need to make sure that that area is completely healthy. And it's supposed to be, um, um, it's like, it's not as porous, but it's more like a, a hose, like a, um, a hose you're spraying your garden or whatever. And so we want things to go through there, but it's also porous too. So our nutrients will pass through that hose. If you've ever had one that has like a drip hose or something. Um, but sometimes we get leaky gut we get different challenges in there. Maybe we're constipated and that starts to irritate the gut lining. Um, maybe we have food reactions, food allergies. Maybe we're eating things we're not supposed to. Maybe we're not holding it and not going to the bathroom when we're supposed to. And toxins get reabsorbed and that damages the intestinal lining. And when that gets damaged, we have the wrong bacteria. We have foods passing through the intestinal walls. Um, we're not getting the nutrients that our body needs. And so it's so important to take care of our gut health and make sure that we have that nice um, intestinal lining that can absorb nutrients, that can support the right balance of bacteria and viruses and pathogens. Yes, we have all of those in our intestines um, and we need the right balance. And so we need to make sure that we're eating foods and living a lifestyle that supports that so let's let's get into this what are your thoughts dan yes you know we talked about gut health a lot and there's so many studies now showing uh, most of our diseases are linked to poor gut health even things like dementia now they're showing that it can be linked to poor gut health even your heart you know even some cancers all the autoimmune diseases all these things because the gut it's also really important for our immune system. And so how do we take care of it? Well, the first thing me and Jennifer was talk about is food because that is your foundation of health. So how does food, what are some of the things we want to eat to make sure our gut is healthy and has a good balance of, you know, good bacteria versus bad bacteria? Yeah, so we want to eat the rainbow, which I always say. We want lots of fruits and vegetables and we need to make sure we're getting fiber. So I can't remember, and maybe you know the statistics, you're always better at the statistics, remembering them than me. Um, people are not even meeting the measly 25 grams of fiber a day. And we need, I know I get at least 50 grams a day. Um, when they look at traditional or ancient tribes or tribes that are present today, um, they get over 100 grams of fiber a day. And so we need different forms of fiber. We can't just take a, a fiber pill or something. We need different forms because one form coats the lining, which slows glucose absorption, protects the lining of the gut. Another one bulks stool to speed up everything you're, so that you know when you eat, you want things to go through around 18 to 24 hours. And so we need to Keep it slow enough that we can absorb nutrients, but fast enough that we're not stuck and letting toxins get absorbed. And so number one is fiber, and you only get fiber from plants, so fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds, whole grains, 
and legumes, beans. And so I say whole grains because even like um, old fashioned oats, that's not a whole grain. A grain of oat looks a lot like barley or rice. And if you look at old fashioned oats, that does not look like rice, right? It's kind of flat, it's been processed. And so we want to eat things um, as close to the way they are found in nature. But when it comes to our grains and our beans, we need to soak them. I get questions about lectins nonstop because of that um, wonderful uh, person who markets nonstop. And we don't want to go all in. He is really great at selling supplements. Um, so you don't need to take a pill to eat grains and beans. You just need to soak them well and then rinse them and then cook them. And you will not have any problems with that. Um, but you can't just go all out and go from a, a diet of not eating fiber to all of a sudden eating 50 grams of fiber either. So that happens a lot too. Someone will say, well, I can't eat beans because I get a stomach ache. Well, you can't eat a hand, whole can of beans if you've never eaten beans. You've got to grow the bacteria that eats those beans. If you've ever worked in a garden, um, there's you can have soil with nothing in it and you plant something and all of a sudden you have different bugs and a whole variety of bugs. They all come and like if you have ever had, like we grow squash and you get squash bugs. Well, squash bugs are not there until you plant the squash. They they sense it and they come to the squash. And so it's the same thing in our body. We need to attract those things and slowly increase um, those foods. But we can also add um, things like probiotics. Do you want to talk about probiotics, Dan? Yes, a lot of people get these and <clears throat> there's many supplements on the market. So... <clears throat> yeah do we need to take probiotics you know that's the thing where i don't think we do i do what i think that if we eat enough plant foods that our body will take care of what needs to take care of now i'm not against probiotic supplements i know have you used those in the past jen yeah and i do and now i have had stool tests like if you can have a gi effects or a gut zoomer mm -hmm. I, mean, I know there's some others too that look at the gut and it'll tell you how diverse things are. Now, for those of you who don't know, I have a history of autoimmune disease and with that usually is leaky gut. And so I had testing done to see what my flora looks like. Now, we did not give a medical disclaimer. Remember, we are not doctors. We do not diagnose. We do not treat. We do not prescribe. This is completely for educational purposes and anything that we say we want you to do your own due diligence, do your own research and see what sits right with you. And if you have a medical condition, run it through your healthcare provider. Um, so for me, I do take probiotics um, to fill in those missing links. But whenever I take a supplement, remember it is a supplement, it is to supplement. And so you wanna get everything you can from your foods. Now, if you've had a serious GI distress, um, maybe you've had some intestines removed, something like that, then we need to start, you can't eat everything. You definitely can't eat a lot of fiber. You've got to um, repair the gut first and then start adding these foods. But I also think that even though I take probiotics, I eat a lot of foods that contain beneficial bacteria. Um, I make my own yogurt. You can buy store-bought yogurt, but if you do, make sure it says live organisms in there. It's much better to buy your own. Most store-bought yogurts contain sugars and artificial sugars. They contain gums and fillers. And so when you make your own, you can control what kind of bacteria is in there. Um, and then it's gonna be a lot more potent because you made it, you made it with nice fresh probiotics that you kept in your refrigerator and you can see, you know, it, it expands. You can tell it's a live material and it's so fresh. In the grocery store, it's been sitting on store shelves. They usually use uh, probiotic strains that can sit on shelves longer and they're not necessarily the ones that are the most beneficial um, for you. But other things, I like to make kefir. And so I make, you don't have to have dairy kefir. I make a kefir with a hibiscus lime mint tea. I make a coconut milk kefir. And so you can make kefirs with different kind of things. Just Google and you can find some recipes for that. Um, I make my own sauerkraut and I put that on my salad every day. Sometimes I make kombucha. Um, a lot of people, um, or kimchi is what I meant to say. I used to make kombucha, but I stopped making kombucha. Um, and I'll tell you why. So I'm going on a total tangent, but probiotics are very important for gut health. Um, so with kefir, kefir is meant to be um, consumed, you know, like you could have a cup of kefir um, and you're going to be fine, right? 
Now, kefir does, can grow yeast. So if you have um, something going on with yeast, you may not want to have kefir um, or make your own and control what is in there. Now, kombucha is only made to be consumed by an ounce. And so I used to drink kombucha by the cup and I ended up totally destroying my gut. And it's because it's only meant to be consumed a little bit of an ounce at a time. And most people don't know that. And they buy the big kombucha. I'm taking a probiotic. It's good for me. And they chug it. And what they don't understand is it's, it's throwing off the balance of your gut. When you have kombucha, you should only have an ounce or so um, with kombucha. So I love probiotics, but I like to get them from my food. And then I only take the supplements to supplement to add alongside um, with that. So do you have anything else to add to that? I agree with you on that. I think that it's best to get most of them from our <clears throat> foods, like you're talking about kimchi, kombucha, sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. There's also something called the prebiotics, mm -hmm. and we can get those from our diet too. So, you know, prebiotics are fiber that feed the good bacteria in our gut. Good foods are like garlic, onions, leeks, bananas, and oat, oats. I guess, um, Still cut oats would be our best option there. Yeah, or oat groats. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. So, uh, they're hard to find unless, you, but yeah, they're good if you can find them. Maybe whole yes. foods. <laughs> right, right. I order mine. Um. So, and I do, I love prebiotics. And so with probiotics, <laughs> you're putting the live organism in there. With So with supplements, you have to have really good supplements that are going to pass through the stomach acid and still be alive, right? Mm -hmm. Prebiotics are the food for the different microorganisms and so that's what they feed on to help um grow and remember we need all of those organisms because some of them make some of our nutrients like b12 and some of them help us to absorb different nutrients and so we want to do that now with this bananas green bananas are prebiotic the sweeter the banana the less helpful it's going to be and so you want um, green bananas i use green banana powder i actually like to stir green banana powder into um, a chia pudding or um, something like that. Now, when you're adding these things, if you haven't added them before, always start low and slow. You know, don't put in a quarter cup of green banana powder in your chia pudding. You might have stomach ache. And so I only put like a teaspoon. Um, but that just helps to feed those natural bacteria. And um, sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes are another one that are really great. Chicory root, that's another one that's great. It's a great prebiotic. Um, and so I love those as well. And so now let's switch to herbs. We talked about prebiotics. We talked about probiotics. We talked about fiber and rainbow foods. So, oh, before we get herbs, I want to talk about beans and mushrooms. So beans and mushrooms um, are also wonderful for helping with the gut lining. Um, lots of B vitamins, beta glucans. And so those are things that we definitely want to have in our gut. And so I know a lot of people, they shy away from beans, especially if they're following, following a keto or a paleo or a uh, plant-based keto, we eliminate the beans. You don't want to cut out those. They're, they're so helpful. Not only are they full of nutrients and you know, vitamins and minerals, they also help us with our gut lining and feeding those bacteria. And there are ways that you can eat them where you're not going to spike blood sugar. You just, like I said, just soak, soak and sprout. Um, so you can't soak and sprout all beans, but like I soak and sprout my oat groats. They're, they have a nice chewy texture. I absolutely love them. Um, or I soak and sprout um, chickpeas or lentils and things like that. And so you, there are ways to eat them where they're not going to spike your blood sugar. You can just eat a quarter of a cup. You don't need to eat a whole can. Um, I prefer not to have a can anyway, but th there are ways. Please don't avoid those. Okay, so now let's get to the herbs. So what herbs do you recommend for gut healing? Of course, we're going to have to start with ginger because ginger, I mean, it's known for gut healing, but it's really good. It's actually ginger. It actually is anti-inflammatory. And so it helps support the gut. It helps with nausea and also improves digestion. I have problems sometimes with digestion. And I notice that if I take a ginger tea or if I add ginger to my food, I digest better. So... It's also good for women. Some women, it helps with uh, morning sickness. Right, right. Yeah, highly anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. It's a great painkiller too. Um, mm -hmm. And But yeah, it helps with uh, motion sickness and, and things like that too. I, I absolutely love 
ginger and I used to even carry ginger with me. And like when my child had braces, instead of taking something when the braces had to go get tightened, um, we would fix ginger tea and have it in the car for her to drink on the way there and on the way home. And she never even had needed any kind of pain medicine or anything um, with the tightening of the braces, which was wonderful. Yes, this is a really good herb. I mean, I, I think that, you know, we talk about inflammation a lot. I think that if you're inflamed, it's going to affect your digestion as well. And so anything that we can do to get rid of inflammation, even weight loss, if you're inflamed chronically, it makes it much harder to lose weight. So, yes. And if you have any kind Another of chronic good condition, herb. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. If you Jennifer. have any kind of chronic condition, you know, autoimmune, cancer, heart, any of that. That, oh, yeah. those all involve inflammation. They all involve inflammation. And so taking herbs that will help with inflammation um, is fabulous. So I'm sorry to in interrupt you. I was going to talk about our next herb, the peppermint. Peppermint, I like to, and it's, it makes a wonderful tea. It's so good, you know? Yes. But the peppermint oil can actually re relax the muscles of the gastrointestinal tract. So it helps with irritable bowel syndrome. Mm -hmm. And it also help with bloating and discomfort after you eat it. Cause look, I have a problem eating too much. So, <laughs> a lot. so I need extra help. I, I can be kind of a pig sometimes. So I need extra help from things like peppermint. And I, I usually have a tea with mm -hmm. my dinner because it's, I mean, I like the way it tastes and it helps me digest. Mm -hmm. So I love it this time of year. I just go out and grab a handful out of the yard and throw it in my drink and oh. just I'll fill it up all day long and drink it. I just love mint. I dried a bunch the other day. I love it. Um, but I remember in um, at, in our with our classes with Dr. Schultz, he gave everybody uh, peppermint, and then he told them, you know, it, it relaxes the sphincters, um, which can help relieve gas. And I remember um, he said <laughs> at the beginning of class, and all of a sudden everybody would got you know kind of shifty in their seats, a little nervous about all this. <laughs> about that but yes so peppermint is wonderful uh, for gas and bloating and you're not going to just suddenly expel a lot of gas it's just very gentle <laughs> yes yes that's so, the beauty of herbs they're gentle right we love our herbs our next one is another one that i used to grow in the garden a lot that i i don't as much anymore i don't know why i know you really love it is a uh, chamomile and chamomile mm -hmm. is very soothing it's wonderful for the skin and it's also wonderful for the intestinal lining. It helps uh, with inflammation. Um, it can help with uh, spasms. If you have, you know, your stomach is kind of cramping up or spazzing, chamomile is very relaxing. We talked about that on our herbs for sleep. Um, so it's just very relaxing, helps uh, with indigestion or gas or, or cramping. Yes, I mean, I love it. I've always taken it just so I can have a good night of sleep, which is very important. For digestion too. And I mean, look, all these things we talk about, inflammation, sleep, all these things are going to help your gut because I always try to tell people it's about the, it's about your overall health. That's what we try to focus on is getting everything as healthy as possible. That way your body works as efficiently as it can. And so chamomile helps with the gut, helps you sleep. Another one is licorice root, which for some people is controversial because yes. if you have high blood pressure, it can increase blood pressure, but you can, they do have to have some on the market where they take the, uh, I can't pronounce the chemical, Jennifer, but I know they take it out of the. Deglycerizenated. Yes. Yes. DGL. 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 Yeah. yeah. And it's supposed to help, right? Um, so I'll, licorice is really great for someone with, with adrenal fatigue or low blood pressure, but if you have high blood pressure, um, or a his, family history of anything related to high blood pressure, like glaucoma, you don't want to take licorice root. And so licorice root is, can be really great for healing the gut lining, but if you have any of those conditions, do not take licorice root. Um, but it's nice and sweet. It can really give a nice flavor. Now I have family history of glaucoma. And so I do not, um, take anything with licorice root. But when I look at teas, when I go, you know, purchase the tea blends in the store, um, I think that might be traditional medicinals and the, is the only one that does not have licorice root in there. They all have put licorice root in there um, as a sweetener. 
um, because we're always looking for natural sweeteners. But like I used to buy uh, a Yogi tea and I probably shouldn't talk about brands. And I thought Yogi tea would be great, but they all, I haven't found one that doesn't have licorice root in it. And so I can't even drink um, any of those teas. And so if you do have high blood pressure or family history of anything like glaucoma, then make sure you're reading your labels um, on all your teas unrelated to gut health. But um, licorice root can be great for you. If you have low blood pressure, you don't have any of those, um, then that can be a great herb. The next herb is slippery elm. It's, this is one of my favorite herbs because I've is has helped some of my clients. I had a lady come to me a few years ago. She had IBS. Mm. And so I told her about slippery elm. Now, the, it was in a combination, but the, mm. the biggest part of this formula was slippery elm. And within five or six days, she was already feeling better. And I can remember when we were, we were at the school, David... And was talking about, you know, IBS. And he said that if you take slippery elm for six months or so, mm -hmm. it can usually fix this problem because it's, it's a, it's a mucilage, it's a gel like herb. When it gets into the uh, digestive tract, it forms a gel. So if you have, if you're, you know, you're, if you have some ulcers inflammation, it helps protect it from the stomach acid. Mm -hmm. And so in time, this helps to heal it because it's not getting re-injured by the acid anymore. <clears throat> it's also a good food. Slippery elm is a really good food, especially if you're having trouble holding food down, like if you have some kind of condition. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chris would give it to small children when they were having trouble with digestion. They could feed the child slippery elm and they're able to tolerate it and they were able to gain weight again and get healthy. So it is an amazing herb. It's yeah. good for acid reflux too. And I also have used it with um, clients with, uh, with, with Crohn's disease. And uh -huh. so if you have Crohn's disease, then try to, you know, make sure you test it and go low and slow. But with my client, we did the low and slow, but we made slippery on gruel and it, it was fabulous. And so I think it's been over a year and I think that she still, she just, she enjoys it. And so it's it very mucilaginous and, and soothing, which you know, we didn't think about it. Um, we didn't talk about it before the beforehand, but marshmallow root can be the same way. But once yep. again, you want to test it, go low and slow because some of these um, can, you know, like we talked about in the beginning, different foods can affect different bacteria in the gut. The same with herbs, different herbs can affect different bacteria in the gut. So if you take an herb and you notice uh, some cramping or bloating or something, then maybe you need to back off and try a different herb. That herb's just not right for you. But in most cases, um, these are slippery elm and marshmallow. Um, they can be in, used interchangeably. And they're very, like you said, mar mucilaginous and coat that intestinal lining and very soothing and, and healing. And like marshmallow root is used um, in infections. Um, Dr. Christopher used it in cases with gangrene. And so it can help with intestinal um, infections as well. And so I, I, I didn't think about that one before we got on the call, but uh, marshmallow root is another one. Another herb on the list is calendula. Yes. I call it, yeah. I call it calendula, but yes. Yeah. Did I, I love pronounce it. it or is it too? <laughs> I, think I don't know. Two. I thought it was calendula, but it doesn't matter. Um, I and I love it. And that's one that I drink every day too recently because it's growing in my yard and it's beautiful and it's great for skin health which if it's great for the, the skin, you know, then that's the same deer intestinal lining is going to help with that intestinal lining as well. And it's also, you know, beautiful orange and yellow flowers full of beta carotene, which is vitamin A in your immune system, which we need lots of vitamin A for our intestinal lining. And so I love a calendula. Another one that I really love because most of us have it in the yard plantain and this herb is amazing i'm telling you it's yeah. good for infections too i have to i want to throw it out there it's also good for infections yes but it's also good for our gut health because yes. it's also mucilaginous the seeds oh, mm -hmm. good. i've used it before um sometimes i make a tea out of it it's not the best tasting tea Mm -mm. But I've seen it heal things like, um, well, my mother-in-law had a UTI not long ago. And so I made her some plantain tea and she mm -hmm. was in pain. Mm -hmm. And within a day or like she drank the tea and the next day, she already felt better. 
because I can remember from the school, Dr. Christopher had a guy that had a, you know, this is just not medical advice, but he had a blood infection mm -hmm. and he didn't want to go to the doctor. It was in his arm already. And Dr. Christopher told him to take, to start taking plantain, eat it and drink the tea. And it cleared the blood infection up. So if we're ever in an apocalypse, it's a good thing to remember about plantain. Yeah. But as far as gut health goes, it's like, a, you know, Jennifer, you have it I mean, where you, you live, right? Grows where you live, too. Oh, yeah. I think it's in everybody's backyard. Yeah. Or front yard. So it grows like across the country or I'm yes. not sure. If it, OK. OK. Yeah, it's different um, varieties. Um, like where I am, it's nice and thin leaves. Um, yeah. Most people have oblongata, which is kind of a fatter um, leaf, mm -hmm. but they all have the mm -hmm. same medicinal qualities. And I even, so I have it all in my yard. So don't spray your yard um, and make sure that you harvest from places where your dog's not going to pee on it. Um, but I, we use it all the time. Um, plantain is one of our favorite herbs. We use it all the time because it's helpful for bee stings and wasp stings and splinters and all sorts of things because it's a pulling herb, um, a drawing herb. But I also put it in my teas. It's in my tea with my calendula, nice and soothing, even though it's not the best flavor. Um, and I harvest the uh, seed heads because psyllium seed, the hull, is what is what they use in like uh, mucinex. Um, it's very mucilaginous. It's um, plantain is called is psyllium. The seeds are the psyllium seed or psyllium husk powder that um, I use when I make like seed breads and things like that. So a lot of people will buy psyllium powder or psyllium husk. And that is very mucilaginous. It's a prebiotic. Um, and it is in your backyard as well. You don't need to even go purchase it. Just go get it off of your plants. Okay, so I think I want to talk about another thing that some doctors recommend for gut health is the amino acid L-glutamine. They say it helps tighten the junctions in leaky gut, but what are the pros and cons of this? So I, I, I'm, I'm, where, go ahead. I had a doctor tell me to take it. And so I took it for a while. I have a history of anxiety. Um, one of my autoimmune diagnoses was Graves' disease, which is uh, heart palpitations and anxiety. And when I took L-glutamine, I noticed that I was having those symptoms again. And I started doing the research and L-glutamine, so one of the side effects can be anxiety. And so if you do tend to have anxiety, while well, L-glutamine may help tighten those um, junctions, it may not be the right thing for you. Yes, I always try to stay as natural as possible. So that would be my last resort anyway. And that's right. what I would recommend for my clients. So. I think with the you know, whole, whole food plant-based diet and some of these herbs, mm -hmm. you're going to get all the benefits you need. Now, there's also other lifestyle changes that are crucial for yes. our gut health. Yes. Stress management. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You can yes. do everything you want to, but if you're stressed all the time, good luck in digesting your food. Right, right. If you ever notice, you get stressed out, you get like a knot in your stomach. Are you nervous oh. and not in the stomach? It's because when you're stressed out, everything slows down. Your body is, if you are stressed out, you're in danger. You're stressed because there's danger, right? And so to protect you, it's not the time to go to the bathroom. Your body's going to shut down that digestive tract. And so you want to make sure that you are not stressed. You don't feel that knot in your stomach, that you're nice and calm because you want that digestive system working um, in tune the way it is supposed to be be working. So definitely, 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 you know, a great thing to do is say a, a blessing or a prayer before your meals. If you don't believe in that, then just saying a few things that you're grateful for or focusing on a couple of deep breaths, you know, doing some deep breaths before each meal, just to tell your body, Hey, I'm safe. I'm grateful to be here. I'm, this body's going to nourish me and, and it's going to give me the nutrients that I need. Something to calm down and relax so that you can, uh, digest and absorb your food appropriately and um, any toxins that are created in that digestion are, are eliminated appropriately. Yeah, just this alone may help a lot of people, especially in America, because we're so rushed. I've had, you know, I've, I've, I've had times where I'm just eating on the run. And look, I think it's better not to eat 
if you're running all day because your body will not digest if you're stressed out. So try to figure out how to relax and eat slower and water. <laughs> water yes. is always a problem. Yeah. And you have to make sure you get it. If you don't get your water, you're not going to digest. It's going to help. It right. helps your digestion, you know? Right. Yeah. We have to have lots of water to help flush things through. It helps to maintain that mucosal lining. And so we want to make sure. So the, a, a good goal is half your body weight in water. And when I tell clients that, they're like, what? I can never drink that much water, which kind of makes me want to cry. It's like, how much water? I've had clients who told me they don't drink any water at all. And so oh. if that is you, start slow and work your way up. Because you know what's going to happen if I ha don't drink anything. Like, look at me. I've got three cups with me right now. And <laughs> you want to drink, you want to drink plenty, but you don't want to chug it. Like if I drink all of this all at once in 15 minutes, I'm going to have to go to the bathroom. Um, and so if you just drink a little bit at a time and slowly increase um, how much you drink each day and make it a goal. So if I'm not drinking any water right now, then by the end of the week, I want to be able to drink. I want to be able to say I, I've been drinking a quart of water. And so what you can do is fill up a quart mason jar um, at the end of the week. So maybe today your goal is to have a cup of water. And then in a couple of days, maybe you go up to a pint. By the end of the day, I'm going to finish this pint of water. And then at the end of the week, by the end of the week, I'm going to finish this quart of water and just slowly increase so that you're not getting up and running to the bathroom, especially getting up overnight, getting your water in the day. Drink a glass of water when you wake up in the morning. That's the easiest thing to do. Wake up, drink a glass of water, that hydrates your body, even asleep. So your body's dehydrated. It helps wake up those kidneys and get everything good, um, moving. So uh, yes, work on the water. If you're one of those people that hate water, you can add some lemon juice to it. It helps yeah. make it taste a little better for a lot of people. Or lime juice even. Or mint leaves. Yes. Yeah. And... I think the last thing we can touch on is exercise. It's also really good for your gut health. Yeah. Because regular physical activity helps you stimulate your intestinal function because we, I mean, movement is life. If we have to move the body for it to function properly, Let's say if you ever have, if you have a car and it's, it hasn't been driven in two months, it's probably not going to work so well. Our body is the same way. You have to move it every day. We were made to move. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 So make sure that you're eating plenty of fiber. Remember, you can only get fiber from plants. That chewy texture in that meat you eat is not fiber. It might be fibrous and get stuck in your teeth, but that is not fiber. Uh, make sure you're eating plants, nuts, seeds, whole grains, legumes, fruits, vegetables. Um, eating those is a really great way to get the fiber and now, if you do have problems where you're running in the bathroom all the time, then you may need to blend them, you know, smoothies, blended soups, things like that, until you can start incorporating more raw foods. Raw foods can be hard on some people, um, but finding ways to eat those, eating them steamed instead of raw may be more beneficial. Just get them in the, however you can. Drinking lots of water, getting movement. That's not training for a marathon. Um, walking, gentle walking, walking in nature. Those are great ways. Um, to help and then incorporating the herbs that we talked about um, ginger peppermint chamomile calendula licorice root slippery elm marshmallow um did i forget any i think, no, I I think you did okay but thank you for joining us today if you like this episode please let us know please hit subscribe and please share our podcast with your friends and i hope that you will Join us again next time. If there's something you'd like for us to discuss or you didn't agree with us, we want to hear from you as well.